Okay, welcome guys. In this video, we will see how to perform a heat transfer analysis in a two-dimensional domain. Let's open ANSYS Workbench. Okay, once the window opens, just click and drag the Fluid Flow Fluent system inside the workbench and right-click the geometry and create new design model of geometry. And here we are about to perform a two-dimensional analysis. So I am going to create a sketch on this XY plane. If you create any sketch in a ZX plane or uh, any other plane, it will, it will not be considered in two-dimensional case. Okay, I am starting the sketch. I am making this plane normal to me. And I am creating a rectangle. That's the flow domain. Uh, here the I am assuming the length of the domain as 10 meters. So I am using the scroll option to change the size scale size. So now it's almost uh, 10 meters approximately and then I am using this dimension option and I am marking this as 10 meters and the width as 1 meter. Okay, just for a demonstration purpose I am creating a small circle inside that. I'm marking the same dimension for both the circles and now I'm trying to position that circles. I'm just giving some arbitrary dimensions. Uh, so my intention is to uh, create a flow inside this domain and the flow will take place from here and it will move on uh, towards and it will towards this direction and it will leave out of the system through this boundary. So and uh, while the fluid is passing through this domain, here I'm having three, uh, two number of tubes. So uh, I will give some heat flux towards to this uh, tube so that will add some heat to the fluid. So it's just like a heat transfer case. Uh, it can be used for any heat exchanging purpose or any heating purpose like a solar heater or any other purposes. Uh, so I just am creating a, an example. So this can be assumed as a, a two dimensional. If this direction Z is very large, otherwise uh, we can say if the uh, changes in velocity or pressure or temperature in along the z direction is negligible we can assume this problem as a two dimensional otherwise surely we need to go for a three dimensional analysis uh, okay uh, then let's move on to the uh, uh, problem so now we have created a sketch in this xy plane and we need to convert that sketch into a surface in order to perform a two dimensional analysis so for that you have to uh, go concept surface from sketches and you have to select base object any of the object and you can click apply and click generate as we need we have created a two dimensional domain where uh, the fluid can be get into this dome into this uh, surface and it has to be uh, leave from this particular edge so let's give the naming so that the fluid can understand what are what are the boundaries uh, that we are going to define So for doing that we need to have some uh, standard namings like inlet and outlet and wall and all. The fluid will understand by the name itself and it will uh, define the nature of that boundary whether it is inlet or outlet or wall uh, like that. Okay, now we are in the step 2 
that is naming these boundaries so here we we have to uh, select the edge selection icon and uh, we have to give this as the in inlet so for that we need to give a name selection i have to right click and i have to give create name selection and that can be named as inlet by default if we give uh, the name inlet it will be considered as and velocity inlet where uh, we need to give the velocity uh, if you want to uh, give any other uh, things like mass flow inlet we need to specify that as mass flow inlet and in the outlet i am giving a name that is outlet so that will be by default it will be set as pressure outlet where we need to define the outlet pressure and these two things are walls so i am by holding the control button i am selecting both the lines and i am giving a name that is walls and now i am selecting these two circles and i am giving name as uh, heat source we have given the inlet outlet and uh, walls and uh, heat flux bar boundaries so now we have given all these boundaries now it's a very important step that is step 3 that is creating the mesh so uh, by simply clicking that mesh and if you click update you will get a, a mesh by default that is the setting which is already in this uh, workbench uh, for fluent so uh, if you want to do an analysis that is really meaningful so we need to have some uh, important considerations before creating this mesh because here we are having a wall so there will be a development of boundary layer and uh, the effects of boundary layer will be there similarly that the boundary layer may be hydrodynamic boundary layer or uh, thermal boundary layer similarly here the thermal boundary layer will play a, a vital role because here the heat transfer will take place uh, from this wall to this fluid so we need to be conscious about uh, these particular things and uh, uh, we can give some inflation layers so for that you have to click the mesh and click insert inflation layers geometry is the face and the boundary scoping is name selection the walls and the heat source okay so i think now it has been selected and now uh, by default there will be a number of layers uh, that can be changed so i, I am setting uh, four number of layers nearer to the uh, these boundaries that i have selected that is this heat flux boundary and also this wall now i am updating the mesh so uh, now we can see a better mesh has been created we have a small uh, layers in nearby the heat source there will be the possibility of having a thermal gradient similarly here we will see uh, we will have a velocity gradient so for that we have it this is even though the size of the mesh inside this domain is uh, seems to be large so for that i have to click the mesh and uh, give the element size that is in default it is around 500 mm so i am trying to reduce that 200 mm So even then the mesh is not uh, looking uh, very fine so i am changing that to 50 mm so actually in order to perform this uh, mesh uh, uh, in order to decide the size of the mesh we need to do an analysis called mesh sensitivity analysis uh, i will i'll explain that in a different video so now the mesh is almost uh, fine so here we have this inflation layers this inflation layers will uh, capture the, the temperature also here it will observe the uh, capture the gradient of velocity so that means a hydrodynamic boundary layer so this is the inlet boundary and this is the outlet okay now we are and we can move on to the analysis section go to the setup and by default if you have a system which is having multiple uh, 
processes you can use a processor here i am having four processes in my uh, laptop so i am using all those four processes to perform the analysis so that we will get the process uh, very speedily that means the iteration time will be very less if you use most of your processes uh, you can see in your task manager you can go to the task manager and you can check how mu how much your uh, cpu is getting loaded so you can see four number of processes are uh, parallelly running so that it is uh, utilizing at most 95% of the system so if i run only one system in parallel processing so that will be uh, that will not be more economic to run that okay now the image has been loaded into the analysis system and just fluent system so now uh, what are the things that we need to uh, do before uh, entering into the system is we can check the uh, mesh we can see that the minimum volume is this much and maximum volume is this much maximum volume is this much and x y coordinates the x coordinate starts from 0 and uh, ends at 1 into 10 to the power of 1 that means 10 meters and the y coordinate starts from 0 and it uh, goes up to 1 meters that is the site is 1 meter and this is 10 meters so we need to be careful because sometimes when we are transferring the geometries from any other softwares the the dimensions may be uh, changed so we need to ch have a check for this and also uh, if you go to the units you can change the units of whatever quantity we need for example if you uh, prefer uh, by default the unit of temperature will be uh, uh, it will be in kelvin if you want to uh, do that everything in celsius you can change that you can also uh, change that uh, uh, whenever we need you can give a value in kelvin and then you can modify that into uh, celsius and uh, whatever we can do uh, meanwhile while doing the process and then we have to decide whether it is pressure based analysis or density based if it is a compressible flow we need to go for density based solver so here we are just having a simple uh, heat transfer analysis that doesn't need uh, to be a compressible flow so uh, we have to calculate the Mach number for uh, calculating uh, for uh, deciding whether a flow is compressible or incompressible and uh, similarly if it is a steady flow we can uh, use this steady if it is dependent uh, some variable is depending on time we can go for a uh, transient so by default it will be a planar mm, and then we will move on to the models so multiphase and all we don't need now but we need the energy equation to be switched on so that we can give the temperature boundaries and the viscous uh, viscosity we uh, it's, it's actually a critical thing uh, we need to calculate uh, because uh, if the flow uh, tend to be laminar we can have this laminar solver itself if the flow uh, is is uh, is uh, how to say we need to calculate the reynolds number first so if the Reynolds number is uh, very high, we need to go for uh, other equations, other turbulence equations. If it is Reynolds number is very less, we can move with the laminar, a laminar case. So in this case, I am trying to have with a very less Reynolds number. So probably that will be a laminar flow, I guess. I am not sure about that. We need to calculate that Reynolds number. That is a very simple. We can simply calculate that by using that formula rho V D by mu. That is Reynolds number and uh, then uh, all, all these things are not necessary for this present analysis and then we will uh, go on to the materials so first we have to define the materials uh, that is to be included in our analysis here we have only air so let's have uh, water in this flow analysis so i'm going to flow in database and taking water liquid and now i am giving copy so now what happened is uh, from the fluid database i have taken that water liquid in our analysis but i, I haven't assigned uh, this domain is uh, filled with water so for doing that i have to do one thing i go i have to go for this cell zone condi conditions and double click that and by default the surface body is named as air so uh, that should be changed as water liquid so now i have changed this total domain into water uh, so it, it it includes two steps but we first we need to 
uh, include that water liquid from that uh, database and then you have to assign that material for this particular domain. I hope you have understood. And then we have to define the boundary conditions uh, uh, at the inlet as we have defined, it is defined as mass flow inlet. So as I need a laminar flow, I need to have a very, uh, very slow, very mo motion of fluid. So I'm not sure about this value, but this uh, in a guess I am giving this value. And direction vector that can be normal to boundary. So here our boundary is in this direction. So if it is normal to boundary, the flow will take place along this x direction. Otherwise, we can also give uh, any direction vector or uh, in x component and y component that will come uh, compute based on your direction. And then in the outlet, uh, by default, there will be uh, a zero pressure that is uh, gauge pressure. That means the atmospheric pressure is applied there. So I leave that to that particular that pressure. And also we need to uh, specify the temperature at the inlet. So at the inlet, I am giving a temperature as 30 degrees Celsius and at the outlet the temperature will be calculated computed by the software uh, so for that I need to I give one more boundary condition that is the heat source wall so by default it is defined as wall so in this wall I can give some heat uh, flux or temperature or whatever we need so I am going to this thermal tab and uh, I can give temperature to that uh, circular pin that is the circle that we have defined in this geometry phase and let us uh, let us have a heat flux over there I am giving a 500 watt per meter square the, actually it depends on the case uh, what you are solving for if you are uh, doing any solar applications the heat uh, flux will be almost in this region this value if, we, if you are having an external source heat source mm, you, we may have a very higher heat flux value so just uh, ch have a check on your uh, actual boundary conditions and uh, do analysis based on that. Here I am just leaving that uh, to zero so that I am having no wall over that. That means I am giving the heat flux directly to the fluid. So here the heat flux is directly applied to that fluid in this particular region. So uh, this, is, this is not uh, considered as a wall and it is having uh, no thickness in our assumption so the heat is directly supplied to this domain okay so now let's move on to the next phase we have given the heat flux and also we have given some velocity and input temperature as 30 degrees celsius and now i am going to the uh, directly we can go on to the initialization and we can initialize that and then go to run calculation and I am giving 100 iterations for a sample and at this point we have to be very careful because the convergence of the solution is very very important. So uh, here we have to observe how much the solution is getting converged. Here we can see a plot that is called a scaled residual plot. So we can observe that. Uh, the residuals, the plot is uh, having uh, the maximum value of 10 to the power of minus 1. It, that means mm, uh, the value of uh, any uh, particular parameter, uh, any velocity or temperature, anything. Here we can see the uh, rose colored thing is uh, pink color is the x velocity. So the x velocity is not converged yet because uh, uh, the, uh, the velocity is changing uh, by iteration and iteration. The, uh, for example, in the 100th iteration if it if the value is uh, 1 meter per second uh, in uh, one not one iteration the value will be uh, changing to a larger extent so that way uh, the in the scale residuals it is not coming down so in order to have a converged solution we need to have a, a very fine mesh also uh, we need we have to be careful with the boundary conditions also now, now let us try to have some more iterations and but it's not our scope today so let's see whether it gets converged or not otherwise we will just uh, move on to the next place so 
So now we can observe this uh, continuity equation is getting converged, but as the other two equations is not uh, getting converged to an appreciable level, but however, it is getting converged. Okay. Yes, it is converging. So let me try for some more iterations. Yes, uh, now, now the solution is converged. It is saying that the solution is converged at uh, 520th iteration. iteration. So, uh, uh, it, it's not the case that the have to relay whatever the fluent says because it is saying the solution is converged, but he based on the data what we have given to it in the solution monitors, I think. So, we have the residuals and we have to get, we have to fix the criteria for uh, that uh, convergence. So, in all these equations, uh, we have a 10 to the power of minus 3, but as only the energy equation, it, we have given 10 to the power of minus 6. So, this equation is considered as converged because it reaches the value of, it reached the value of 10 to the power of minus 3. So, if I, if I change the value to some uh, additional ex, uh, extent, so let's see. Uh, this x velocity is just converged up to the level of 10 to the power of minus 3. So let me try with some more. Now the x velocity, I, have, I am expecting 10 to the power of minus 4 uh, level of convergence. So now I am doing that again. So now the solution will continue instead of telling that it is converged. Yes, you can see the solution is continuing to be uh, running. And it is converged to the level of 10 to the power of minus 4 at the iteration of 539. So now we can see the solution is converged up to the level of 10 to the power of minus 4. So this is how we need to fix the uh, expected uh, convergence limit based on the requirement of our system and based on the requirement of our analysis. And uh, then we can move on to the solution phase. Uh, generally, uh, we need to plot the uh, counters. So, let me go to the counters. Before that, uh, we have to check the uh, temperature values because in at uh, the inlet, we have given a value of 30 degrees Celsius. So, surely we need to uh, see the temperature at the outlet. So, for that, we go to the reports and give the surface integrals and phase it average. I am going to plot the average. Uh, temperature at the outlet okay the average temperature at the outlet is around 54 degrees so we have given 30 degrees at the inlet so 24 degrees has been increased uh, because of the heat flux that we have given in this uh, given through that boundary heat boundary so let us uh, plot that uh, temperature uh, so that we can uh, get a clear uh, picture about that. So, I am giving temperature and fill and all nodal values can be checked out and display. Okay, we can see that the, uh, we will go for smooth contours. So, it will be more smooth now. So now the heat is dissipated from here. So uh, the heat is added to the system through this boundary. So we can see the higher temperature is observed at this point and then uh, it, it, it is uh, spreading to the overall uh, the other fluid particles and again here you can see the uh, again the fluid, fluid is getting uh, higher temperature and it is uh, leaving out from this. Point. So you can also right click this point and you can see the average temperature is uh, around 29 to 36 here and you can make a click here here it is around 43 to 50 and at the base the temperature is around uh, 57 to 64 degree so uh, we have uh, computed previously the average temperatures so, so now we can uh, measure the temperature at each and every point that we desire so if you want to uh, measure the pressure temperature here you can do if it is here you can also do that Okay, then let's move on to other parameters that is uh, the other important parameter that we need to measure is the, we need to visualize is the velocity plot. So the velocity plot uh, clearly shows that uh, this is a very, very common thing because where the area is getting reduced, the 
velocity will be get increased that is based on our bernoulli's principle that is evident here so here also it is evident so since the sum of the area is occupied by this uh, heat transferring tube the area is getting lesser and we can see a higher velocity region here and then uh, we we can also uh, see the fluid flow pattern how the fluid is moving by using the vectors so vector as we know that is a magnitude as well as a direction so if you want to uh, see a vector of velocity you can plot like that and you can scale that so that we can give a big have a bigger arrows and okay to skip some of the points will be skipped so i can do that for better visualization so and now you can observe that at the inlet the fluid is flowing in this direction and uh, here you can see the fluid separation takes place because of this uh, thing and uh, meanwhile uh, here we actually the uh, temperature gain is taking place but uh, since this is it's a plot of velocity it's not uh, visible here Uh, if you color that by temperature we can visualize that instead of having color by velocity you can velo you can color by temperature okay so now the scale is more different so the scale can be 5 and skip Okay, now you can observe that the temperature, high temperature is observed here. And here we can see the maximum uh, reddish color. So uh, it shows how the fluid particle is moving in this domain. Uh, then the most important thing what we need uh, next is uh, converting this uh, contour plot or uh, a whatever to a shareable. image so that is very essential so for that we can use uh, there is an option first you have to fit this to the screen so for that i am doing this so now it is fitted to the screen i am going to the contour it is the velocity contour for sample okay now if you want to plot this uh, contour we have to click this uh, camera icon say picture and if you use simply the window resolution the resolution will be poor so just click that and you can change to the to change the resolution to a maximum extent so that we can have a very good resolution image and a white background is preferred so that it will be more pleasing i am saving that in my desktop and then that as q okay so this is that file so now we can see the file is having very good resolution and uh, you can have the scale also here uh, so this will be a very good idea to communicate to other people through any uh, research article or some any consultancy work like that so uh, this particular uh, visualization is very essential if you like this video please hit the like button and uh, please share it to your colleagues and friends and uh, don't forget to subscribe thank you